Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So my last topic, I would like to talk something about sulfonylurea. So you all are in a hypoglycemic state. I want to talk about a very potent hypoglycemic oral hypoglycemic medication. So we'll start with the case. A 60-year-old farmer, BMI around 23, presented with hyperglycemic symptoms three months ago and found to have diabetes. And he was started on medical nutrition therapy plus metformin. His metformin dose gradually increased, started with 500 BD TDS and increased to one gram three times a day. It's from a peripheral hospital. So after three months, his glycemic control unsatisfactory. In detailed history, diet everything fine, good compliance. So what to do? What's the next step? So he's a farmer, poor socioeconomic background. So all these guidelines, including ADA, NICE, and everything nicely mentioned, there are so many options, second line agents available. You can use sulfonylurea, you can try thiazolidinedione, DPP4 inhibitor, SGLT3 inhibitor, even GLP-1 agonist or insulin. So what to do for this patient? So that's why the diabetes approach, patient-centered approach, or individualized approach is very important in the management of diabetes. Asian phenotype is different from Caucasian phenotype. So we see a lot of diabetic patients with low BMI. And our patients, high rate of young onset of diabetes. And most of them, they are having increased body fat, especially the visceral fat. And the important thing is insufficient beta cell response in normal weight type 2 diabetes. So in Caucasian, main issue is the insulin resistance. So in Asians also, we have insulin resistance, but the component of insufficient beta cell response is very important in South Asian. So we need to think about the Asian diabetes phenotype. So sulfonylurea, one of the cornerstone in the management of type 2 diabetes for the last 60 years. And you can use sulfonylurea as monotherapy or in combination therapy. But the issue is, because of the newer drugs, concern about sulfonylurea. People are worrying about side effects. People are thinking about weight gain and hypoglycemia. So what to do? So that's why, as I mentioned, individualization of treatment. So careful monitoring and patient education is very important. So if you do like that, we can use, we can get maximum benefit with sulfonylureas with minimal side effects. So when we just think about the pathophysiological basis of diabetes, as mentioned by previous speaker, during the course of treatment, progressive nature of type 2 diabetes with gradual decline in functional beta cells. So in this uh, diagram, you can see when you diagnose diabetes, most of the time, 50% reduction in beta cell function. So all these evidence suggest early combination therapy with intensive glycemic control is an effective approach. So we can better preserve the beta cell function, so then we can achieve the target glycemic control and reduce diabetic-related complication. So if any delay in stepping up from monotherapy to combination therapy, that's other meaning is stepwise approach. Sometimes people start with metformin and go to maximum dose, then think about sulfonylurea, that's stepwise approach. So, but we need to think about the combination therapy because long period of hyperglycemia is harmful. So long period of hyperglycemia can cause all these complications like micro and macrovascular complication. So that's why the tight glycemic control is very important. 
Landmark trials like UKPDS clearly mention just one percentage reduction of HbA1c reduce diabetes-related mortality or morbidity by 12 to 43 percentage. So the initial intensive glycemic control is very important in the management of diabetes. So previous speakers also nicely mentioned about the legacy effect. When we compared with conventional and intensive treatment, after some time, if you stop the intensive management plan also, the legacy effect can persist. So nicely mentioned here, with insulin therapy and sulfonylurea, the legacy effect persists for years. So then expected HbA1c reduction with all these medications. There are so many new medications available, SGLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1 agonist or any drug. For example, the DPP-4 inhibitors HbA1c reduction, 0.5 to 0.8 percentage. But if you just consider the sulfonylurea, the expected HbA1c reduction, 1 to 2 percentage. So that's why we need to think our patients and we need to think about the individualized approach and then we can design the management plan. Metformin produces this anti-hyperglycemic action without affecting the insulin secretion. So it's an insulin sensitizer, as nicely mentioned by the previous speaker. But people are talking about kings and king one and two, but kings can't work alone. King need a queen. So one best option is don't uptitrate metformin into maximum dose. So with half titration, combined sulfonylurea. So that's the best way to manage diabetes in initial stage. Why? Metformin is an insulin sensitizer, but sulfonylurea is an insulin secretor go. So if king and queen work together, you can get a better response. So how to classify sulfonylureas? One classification is conventional sulfonylureas and modern sulfonylurea. Conventional means tolbutamide, glibenglamide, like drug. Modern drug likes glimipride or glycoside MR, like drugs. So other classification depend on the duration, short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting sulfonylureas. Like tolbutamide short acting, glipicide and glycoside intermediate acting, glibenglamide, glimipride, or glycoside MR, long-acting sulfonylure. So the conventional or modern sulfonylurea are widely used as a second-line agent in South Asian countries. Not only in South Asian countries, Middle East countries, and Southeast Asian countries, and African countries. For example, tolbutamide. Sri Lanka is the only country in South Asian region still using tolbutamide, but that's a wonderful drug. Like clopropamide, that's still used in Tanzania. So then we need to think about the cost. Medication cost always play a significant role in the management of any disease in underdeveloped or developing countries. So the cost directly affect the drug utilization and patient's compliance. So as a second line therapy, we need to think a drug with lower cost without compromising the glycemic efficacy and tolerability. So now you know what is a second line agent for our patient. So that's why mainly the South Asian countries expert get together the city of Delhi, the capital of India, and form a consensus recommendation of sulfonylurea or SAFI's executive summary on usage of sulfonylurea. This article published in Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. Second line drug, other than metformin, tried to consider sulfonylurea in South Asian patients. And if you have facilities 
it's better to consider modern sulfonylureas like glimipride or glycoside MR as a second line agent. And in that consensus recommendation, they talked about FDCs, fixed dose combination. For example, if you have a drug metformin plus glycoside combination or metformin plus glimipride com combination, it's wonderful. In this region, only Sri Lanka and Oman, we don't have fixed dose combination drugs. So fixed dose combination containing sulfonylureas reduce the cost and offer convenience and improve patient adherence to the medication. So then we'll consider the comparative assessment of dual therapy. For example, compared to metformin up titration beyond half maximum dose, addition of sulfonylurea demonstrate better glycemic effect, safety, and tolerability. So if you compare with pioglitazone, sulfonylurea, good glucose-lowering efficacy, and significantly low risk of weight gain. Compared to DPP-4 inhibitors, Sulfonylurea, better and more durable glucose-lowering efficacy, but you need to consider about the weight gain and hypoglycemia risk. So if you compare with the SGLT2 inhibitors, sulfonylurea, non-inferior glycemic control. If you compare with GLP-1 receptor agonist, similar glycemic efficacy with acceptable safety at lower cost. So what about in comorbid condition? So people have talked about cardiovascular safety issues and drugs. There's insufficient evidence to suggest the sulfonylurea, especially modern sulfonylurea, increase cardiovascular risk. In large multicenter trials like UKPDS or advanced trial confirmed, sulfonylureas reduce microvascular complications due to diabetes and no increase all cause mortality. So here you can see the sulfonylurea and cardiovascular risk. So you can't say no increase cardiovascular risk. So this is the comparison of various cardiovascular outcome trial which had sulfonylurea in control group. So these are the recent trials like TCOS trial and SAVO TIMI trial. So all these trials Sulfonylurea selected as a control group. So see the bottom line. In all the recent cardiovascular outcome trials, the control group have sulfonylurea as the major drug and did not show worse cardiovascular outcome. So all these meta-analyses and randomized trial summary, sulfonylurea not associated with increased risk of all-cause mortality or cardiovascular mortality, or myocardial infarction, or stroke. So then we'll think about other comorbidities. For example, moderate to severe renal impairment, what to do? So in a patient with moderate to severe renal impairment, so we need to start short-acting sulfonylurea, such as glipicide, metabolized through the liver. In mild to moderate renal impairment, so we may consider modern sulfonylurea, preferably at low dose. In mild to moderate hepatic impairment, so we need to reduce the sulfonylurea dose, and we need to keep longer interval in between sulfonylurea doses. So just we discuss about the summary of SAFI's recommendations, especially for the South Asian people. The addition of sulfonylurea is a gold standard combination therapy. So we are using for decades. And because of the low cost and high efficacy, sulfonylureas are widely used as second line agents. So Dr. Khandava nicely mentioned about this combination, BITS therapy. So we can combine metformin plus sulfonylurea like that insulin plus sulfonylurea. So if you use bedtime insulin and daytime sulfonylurea, so you can reduce the fasting hypoglycemia and postprandial hyperglycemia. So you can achieve better glycemic control. 
So in conclusion, intensive, intensification of diabetic therapy with proactive approach is crucial to achieve target glycemic control. Sulfonylureas are an important component of pharmacological armamentarium in the treatment of type 2 diabetes because we have long-term use. We are using sulfonylurea for decades, so we know the side effects. Well-established efficacy and safety profile. And the most commonly recommended class of agents when glycemic targets are not achieved with metformin alone. And the important message, selection of sulfonylurea should be highly individualized and with careful monitoring in high-risk patients because there's a disparity in pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic uh, among the groups of sulfonylurea drugs. Lower treatment cost without compromising the glycemic efficacy and tolerability, it's important. So that's why sulfonylurea is one of the frontline agents in the management of diabetes. So the important key points here, appropriate patient selection, suitable drug and dosage, proper patient and physician education. So in summary, effective and vigilant use of sulfonylurea is very important. So the management of diabetes, as mentioned earlier, should be individualized, patient-centered approach. Depend on the patient's age, comorbidity, patient's socioeconomic background, we need to decide the management plan. And depend on the BMI, because there are so many new drugs available with good potency. So we can use those drugs in particular conditions. So this slide, every drug has advantage and disadvantage. Sulfonylureas, there are so many advantages, but there are few disadvantages. So we need to think in a proper way, and we need to use, as mentioned earlier, proper and vigilant use of sulfonylurea as a second-line therapy. So what do you think? In our patient, this 60-year-old farmer with poor socioeconomic background, on maximum dose of metformin, what's the next step? In our population, our South Asian countries, the second line therapy we can consider as sulfonyl urea. So thank you for your patience.